Tennis Grand Slams, they're happening all over the world, but how much of the game involves engineering? I've come to Manchester Metropolitan University to meet Dr. Thomas Allen, who's going to give me the juice. Tennis is a great system for demonstrating engineering. So we have the oldest rackets here from the 1930s. So we've got these two rackets, completely different. This one's really small. So you've got this small head. So you think it's actually quite hard to hit the ball with. It's quite hard to learn to play tennis. This one here, this massive surface to hit the ball with. It makes it much easier to play. So this is made out of some kind of composite material. Something, something like this. So we have fibers mixed in with plastic. Tennis balls don't last, don't last forever. I, over time, the felt starts to wear. The even during a game. High. Even even during a game, you notice anyone that's played tennis will notice that as the balls get old, they don't bounce so well and then you have to replace them. Can we design a ball that doesn't wear out, that, that bounces forever in the same way, where that always has the same felt cup and always flies and comes off the racket in exactly the same way? So that's a real engineering challenge. Can you make a sustainable, a sustainable tennis, tennis ball. ball? But it could be something like this, some kind of mechanical metamaterial, like a structure, maybe inside the ball, so we're not relying on air. You need to be ahead, you need to be reactive, predicting what's coming next. So go down to London, go to the ITF, you'll have a great time. And I did just that. I headed to the International Tennis Federation near Wimbledon in London. We're in the International Tennis Federation test lab. So this is where we do a lot of tennis-based research. So we have a number of test equipment which we've built to test tennis-specific properties. So that's everything from rackets to balls to surfaces. It's really important to try and understand how the, this equipment is performing because we see uh, lots of innovations in tennis. For example, when you look at rackets, how they've evolved, and if we need to, how we can introduce regulation to make sure that it's the players that are winning the games and not the equipment. We want it to be a fair playing field. We want the whole game as a, as a whole to be uh, innovative, but we need to make sure that it's fair to all the players and that ones which have, a, say, a certain sponsorship to use a certain racket aren't getting an unfair advantage. One of the things we can measure is racket power. So we have this robot just behind us where we can replicate a serve. It's something that's not available in the market. So when we want to test these sort of things, we kind of have to design and build them ourselves. The result coming up here is 0.6. So this is the coefficient of restitution. We're taking the pre-impact speed of the racket and the post-impact speed of the racket and the speed that the balls come off and from that we can get a power rating. So let's come down here, we can look at this surface testing device. So what does this actually do? So we have two parts to this, we have our air cannon here which is powered by this bike pump and then we have this box now what happens is the ball will fire through at a specified angle and in here we have sets of light gates so we'll measure there's a set here which measure the inbound velocity and then we have a set here which measure the outbound velocity and between those two points the ball's going to bounce on the surface and fire out this end. We're looking at pace of the court, so how fast the ball is coming off of the court surface. It's all self-sufficient so we can take it around the court, we're not reliant on having power so the batteries come in. Are you actually taking this device? We, onto surfaces, like walking around Yeah, so we'll take this, we'll travel around the world with it. So if we aim for, let's go for uh, 25 PSI. Let's see that. Am I looking at Yeah, you're there. looking at this dial here, so okay. yeah, about here. I'm going to click Prime, and then if you just have a firm push down on the red button. Okay. And we'll see it go. So, ready? Three, ready. two, one. You would process the data and here we have our CPR, COR, COF, uh, 72, which is very fast. You wouldn't see that on a normal Ask an engineer court. for one <laughs> simple answer, you just don't get it. It's not going to happen. From court surface testing to the testing of the tennis balls themselves. Yeah, this is for pre-compression. So because the balls have rubber in them, we need to make sure that we remove any set in the rubber because we don't know how long these balls have been sat around. They could have got quite stiff. So let's load them up, one ball in each of these slots. Do you want to clear Oh, it's totally hammering the ball. Yeah. It's kind of massaging the tennis ball. Yeah, exactly. Once they've come out of being massaged, where do they then go? We would bring them onto here, which is our test to make sure they conform to the size. They must go through the top ring, and similarly, in the bottom ring, it's a no-go. So as long as it's not falling through under its own weight, 
That ball's now passed for size. Next, the ball compression test. I'll switch off that compressor and we'll go on to the next compressor. So to start with, if you could load up the machine for me. So what we want to do is on each one of these slots, ideally we want them in the same I axis can. orientation because essentially it tests it in three axes. So we want to make sure we're consistent. It's all very precise. There's a light shining on one of them. So yeah, so that's the laser to for the machine to tell if there's a ball ready to be on. So at the end, it, or if there's no ball, it knows end of test. Okay, so we'll put uh, applied load onto the balls and then we're seeing how far they're gonna deform under that set load. And finally, from compression to the bounce test. So we've got the light going- got a mirror there. Shining against the mirror and coming back. And the reason we're doing that is because we're not actually measuring the ball, we're gonna be measuring its shadow. Ah, okay. I thought the mirror was so that you're always looking good yeah. while you're testing. Do you want to do any? Yeah. So we have a calibrated screen um, and we know exactly how far, how high the ball has gone based on its shadow. And then that will record uh, the height. So we'll take four bounces for each ball take the mean, look at the range as well, make sure they're not too variable. After testing ball performance, David then took me to their wind tunnel to measure how a tennis ball travels through air. Up on this end is where the intake is, so air is coming in here. Air is getting sucked in through here. Getting sucked in, it's being funneled into this area here, which is our area of interest. We can see our tennis ball in there and I've set some spin up. So we can experiment with how different levels of spin are affecting the aerodynamics. Okay, it's a pretty slow spin. That's <laughs> a pretty slow spin, but yeah. we can wrap that up. So we can put some smoke through and that helps us visualize exactly what is happening to the air as it's flowing around the ball. Can you what? hear the fan start? Yeah. So we're gonna start off steady, 20 meters a second, and we'll slowly ramp it up. It's so crazy because you've got all this uh, equipment and experimentation, but players know about this instinctively. Yeah, so they're doing this all in their heads. Do you know, I'm not going to be able to watch a game of tennis in the same way. Do you know what's really cool about today? Is the fact that so much of this is sophisticated technology, but yet some of the experiments are so basic and they do such important things for the game of tennis. I think that's what I'm going to take away with me today, is that engineering can be a bit Heath Robinson, a bit cobbled together, but ultimately it is all to just make the sport more accurate, more innovative and more exciting.